Okay, let's talk about this Carolina lab. Uh, I'm going to help you here with this template and everything to complete this lab. So this first part here, we've got mass, height, diameter, radius. So you can calculate the volume and the density. Now, we know the density of water is one. So make sure your aluminum does not flow, which should not be less than one. Okay, if we go on to the next section, so it looks like polyethylene here would float, huh? If we go on to this activity, what you need is you need this mass. You need this final mass because density is mass divided by volume. And this is a Excel spreadsheet that I have. And I just made this data up. Do not copy this data. So, and I'm going to show you how to do this individually because Excel doesn't like to do more than four in the graph. At least I didn't get it to do it. So here's my 0% solution. So if you set it up like this, like in Excel, you have your volume here and your mass, but I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to show you this. I'm going to copy this. And here's my 10% data. So I'm going to do control. I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to paste my 10% data in here. Now, I can also show you how to duplicate this. So if you just start with V and M, and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, that's the same. So if you go control C is to copy and control V to paste, control V to paste, control V to paste. Let's put them like this. Then we're going to do individual graphs. So here is my 10%. I'm going to cut this out of here. And there is my 20% and so on. Uh, I can show you this. I'll delete those columns. So if I highlight this the way it is, Excel will put these into one chart. And it throws it over here. You want to make sure this goes 0 through 30. Because this is your mass. And this is not graphing this correctly. So we'll just get rid of that. OK, let's go back. So cut, paste, cut, paste. Cut, paste, and cut, paste. OK, so I'm just going to clear this out. So here's what we've got. You've got your volume in this column. You've got your mass in this column. And here is the 0% data, 10%, 20%, and so on. So if you go like this and just left click and highlight this way, then we'll go to insert scatter. We want that right there. I'm going to move this chart up. I'm going to shrink this down so it fits right in this territory right here. That looks like a good graph. I'm going to double click in here and then I can change it. And we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. And that's what we have. My change in Y is my mass. And my change in X down here is my volume. So I'm going to right click on one of these dots. So I'll right click. We're going to add trend line. And then we're going to click, click set intercept. It'll automatically go to zero and display equation here. So I'm down here in the bottom right. And that's what it does. So I'll put that equation right there, and I'm going to go to the next one. So when I go to the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight it like this. I'm going to insert an XY scatter graph. We're going to shrink this down to like this. And I shrunk it a little bit too much. Let's see if I can get a little bit out of that. 
I'm going to write, well, I can change this to the same title. Now, you have to make sure that this is graphing it correctly. So this is the point 15 is my X and 15.2 is my Y. So let's go to this first one. So this is five and 5.1. Okay. Now let's see. Right click and add trend line, intercept display equation. And that's what we've got. So we're going to do the next one and so on like this. So insert scatter again. We're going to shrink this. Put it right here and make it a little bit bigger. Right click, add trend line, click on those two. There's my equation. I'm going to move it up to there. And I could do the same thing, but I'm fine with that. So we're notice now your slope here. This is our slope 0.9935. And our slope is going up. Yours should go up because as you, as you add more sugar, the density of solution should get more and more. So you can continue this. And this is probably the easiest way to do it. You can shrink them down put them right next to each other. We're gonna add trend line to this one. And again, I just made this up, set intercept, it automatically goes to zero here, display equation. And we'll move that to there. And we can add trend line. You could actually do, you could add the trend line right there when it's large as well. So we'll put that there. We're going to right click and move that up and highlight. Insert XY scatter. Shrink this down. Right click, add trend line. And just move that so we can see it easier. And you're going to insert XY scatter. Add trend line. There we go. And our solutions become more dense as we're adding more sugar. So the slopes of the lines are getting more and more and more. So that if we put them on one graph, you would see that as, as well. So now I'm gonna pull up here. So this is what we're looking for. We're graphing uh, the data here for its mass of solution. The volume stays the same for all of these. And what happens to the density of a solution as the concentration of sucrose is increased? Well, the density should increase, obviously. Okay, now it wants this. It wants the equation here, and the density is your slope. So if we do the 60%, here's my 60%. My equation here is y is equal to 1.1116. I'm not worried about sig figs x. And your slope is 1.1116 grams. Oh, we've got unit, units, grams per cubic centimeter. So you can fill this in. And then what it's looking for in the next part, it says insert a graph from data table three here. Well, let's do that. So let me minimize this. How about we just do this? Let's just highlight all of this. And I'm highlighting over to G because that's where I kind of, it'll all fit. So right to here, I'm gonna go control C to copy. 
I'm going to open up my Excel or my Word doc, and I'm going to hit Control V to paste. And look at it, just threw it all in there. That's nice. I can make it. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, they're all here. Looks like it got a little bit funky right there. Let's see if I can move that down and line it back up. Uh, it might be, looks like that last one might not have come. So let me go back 1.116. Oh, it did come. Which one got chopped off? One of them got chopped off here. We got three there. Uh, let's see, this one's correct. 1.089, which one did I lose? 1.075, I'm trying to look. Yeah, I'm missing the one in between here for some reason. 1.0, I'm missing this one, I think. So I'm gonna try to copy this chart quick. I think this is the one I'm missing. Yeah, that's the one I'm missing. Oh, now it's trying to, it's trying to be ugly. So let me go into wrap text and what I should probably do is just start over and bring these in separately here again. All right, it looks like I got them all there. Okay, so that's what we're looking. You can just control paste. That should have copied in smoother, I would have thought. Now it's wanting, I'm going to go back. So here you're predicting whether or not I believe sink or float. Yeah. Sink or float here. Now that you know all of the densities. Then insert a graph and data table two here as directed in activity four, step one. Okay. Activity four, step one. This is looking for, it wants your percentage here and your slopes, and that's what you're going to graph. So my last slope here is 1.11, 1 1.1116, 1 1.0898, and 1.0735, 1.0735, and so on. You're just putting all your slopes in here, 0 0.9935, whatever yours is, and 1.0244, and 1.0407, and the one I'm missing, 1.0571. Now it's looking for you to graph this. So we're going to insert a graph, X, Y, scatter, and there it is. Okay. Um, density, so okay. So yeah, data table two here as directed in activity four, step one. I don't have that file open, but we're looking for that graph, I believe, of percent uh, versus your density. Uh, then we have data table five. So on data table five, this is a solution that you do, some sucrose in beverage. Now, it's a little bit different because your beverage is probably going to have high fructose corn syrup. Ideally, you'd have a beverage, I think you can buy Pepsi right now, that's real sugar in it. Uh, so in this next part, you are doing exactly what you did before. You have your volume and then you need your mass of solution for your beverage. And I can just... This will not match anything. So um, I'm just going to make this up. 
completely, completely make this up so this doesn't mean anything. Okay, and then you're going to get the slope of this just like we did before. Shrink this down, we'll get the slope. Now, my slope, I just made this up. I got 1.11 here. Well, if this is your sugar drink, whatever it is, Red Beer Mountain Dew 1.11, you should be able to go up here and look at this would match this pretty close. Yours is not going to be this high. It's a little bit less than this slope of the 60% solution. So 1.11, you know, it's probably in here at 58%. If 50% is 1.089, 1.11 is 60%. I'm a little bit less than this one, but I'm close. I'm probably looking at a 59% sucrose solution because the slope of my sugar drink kind of matches up the slope of my 60%. Uh, and again, now you can, let's see if we can copy this. I think it says to copy. And I overdid the graph here a little bit. I'm gonna go to here. And what is my chart here? My chart here is percent versus density. We can put that in here, percent is density on this one. And this one is mass over volume, but I like to just put mass divided by volume here because that's what you're finding, your, your density here. And you can, let's see, I'm sure we got to pop this one in. So I'm going to copy this and I'll bring this up somewhere. It's going to want, insert a graph of, uh, yeah. Insert a graph right here. I'm gonna hit return. I'm gonna do control V, there's that one. It wants my other graph here. So I'm gonna hit return and go back to Excel. And let me grab this one. And I over highlighted here, but I'm gonna cut this off. So I'm gonna go control C to copy and control V to paste. And I'm gonna just click here and get rid of that. I just wanted to make sure I had it. Oh, I didn't put the equation on there. Probably wants the equation. I don't have the exact directions open, but you would right click and insert. Okay, I think that pretty much uh, should help you out with the lab. So that's how you can quickly do the trend lines in Excel. If you set it up like this and hopefully that helps.